Hi, I'm Jeff DeRiso from Beckman Collaborative, and today I'm going to show you how to use automation rules in Zoho projects. These rules can trigger custom actions based on your selected criteria. This can help reduce the number of manual steps taken in your business process. It can also empower your team to be adaptable and make quick mass updates to tasks when things change in your business. So let's get started and I'll show you how it works. So here we are in Zoho Projects, and today we're going to talk about two different types of automation rules. One of them is a workflow rule, and the other is a macro rule. And there's different use cases for both, and we'll talk about that as we go. So let's go to the cog icon in the top right corner here for setup, and let's go to project automation first. So we can have a workflow rule based at the project level or at the task level. You can see we have a couple for projects here. And we go to task automation and workflow rules. And we also have macro rules. So macro rules and workflow rules are very similar. The main difference is that workflow rules trigger automatically and macro rules are manually triggered. So depending on your business process, uh, you may want to choose one over the other for a certain type of task. In our previous video, we talked about blueprints. Now blueprints are great for certain types of tasks that have a strict uh, life cycle process and a high level of complexity, but workflow rules are better for those types of tasks where you need more flexibility. So let's, let's look at the use cases for a workflow rule. Let's say, for example, you have a person on your team who's always doing a specific type of task. Let's say you have one developer on your team and you always wanted to assign development tasks to this specific team member. So a workflow rule is going to allow you to do that very easily. Let's create one right now and we'll click new workflow rule. And if you've seen my previous video on workflow rules in Zoho CRM, this process is almost exactly the same. So we'll give it a name. And first we choose what triggers the rule. And in this case, we want it to be when the task is created. So we're going to leave that. We can also choose to do when it's updated commented on, deleted, or a document attached. Those are our trigger options. And the next thing we do is we set our criteria. And this is where we define which type of tasks this workflow rule will affect once it gets triggered. So first we wanna choose our test project so we don't accidentally affect any real tasks. And we'll also add another criteria. We'll say task name includes, contains or we could also do starts with. Uh, I'll just do contains for now and I'll click done. So that means if any task that's created, whenever a task is created in the test project 2023 that contains this string of text here, dev in all caps and closed in brackets, then whatever actions we set here will be triggered. So let's add our action now. That's the third step of creating our workflow rule. Click add action. And what we want to do is update a field. And our field is the owner. And since I am the developer in this organization, we're going to assign it to me. So we'll update that. So now we've set our trigger, our criteria, and our action. So anytime a task is created with the project name of test project 2023 that contains dev in all caps in brackets, it will automatically be assigned to me. So now we want to save the rule. But before we do that, we want to check this box that says execute the next workflow rule. So what that means is if this field update that we do happens to activate another workflow rule, uh, it will make sure to execute that next workflow rule in the automation chain. So we almost always want to check this box. I can't really think of a lot of situations where you wouldn't want to check that box. So then we click save rule. And we've now applied our workflow rule. So let's go into our project and test it. Okay, so here we are in our project. I've created a test task list here for our tutorial. And let's just create a new task here. And if, you, if you're like me and you like to create tasks from the Kanban view, this automation is great for you because you just create a task name and the rest is going to happen automatically. So we'll say
and we'll create the task. And now you see it's been assigned to me automatically without me having to do anything. Because it contained this string of text, it was automatically assigned to me. So that, that works pretty well and it's a pretty easy thing and you can add more actions and more criteria to fit your own business needs. So now let's talk about macro rules. Macro rules are, like I said before, macro rules are triggered manually. And I think a great use case for macro rules is when you need to make a quick change in your business, when something unexpected happens and you suddenly need to update a whole task list or a whole milestone, all the tasks in the current budget milestone for this project or all the tasks in a certain ta task list. And now we do have the option, of course, to make field updates. We can, for example, go in and manually select these tasks and then do a field update. We can do that. Or we can select all the tasks in the task list and do a field update. We can update the status, the start date, we can assign them. We can do mass updates. But let's say, for example, you need to update everything in a task list, but the update needs to be conditional. It needs to be only certain tasks. And you don't necessarily want to have to go through and click manually and select if you have, let's say, 30, 40 tasks in your list. You don't want to have to go manually select each one and see which ones match that certain criteria. So that's where a macro rule can help you because it, it does these same type of mass updates, but it allows you to set conditions. So let's go to our setup and we'll set up a macro rule. So if I click new macro rule, you give your rule a name and you set a criteria. So this is what you're checking for. Once you trigger it manually, you're checking the tasks to see if they fit this criteria and then you're doing a field update. And these are the options you have for field updates, billing type, priority, uh, completion percentage owners, followers, and uh, custom fields that you've created. So you can do those field updates based on a condition for all tasks in the task list. So that way, if you select all tasks in the task list and not all of them meet the condition, then the mass update will only apply to the ones that meet the condition. So let me show you a rule that I've already created. So this is one that says assign overdue tasks to me. So this could be helpful if, all, if you need to quickly assign yourself uh, in bulk as the owner of several tasks. So that way you can just select everything in the task list and the only tasks that will get affected by the mass update are the ones that fit this condition. So let's test this one right now. We'll go again to our task list here. Now we have several tasks here and some of them are marked at varying uh, levels of priority. Uh, but you see these are all unassigned and you see these three are overdue because they have this due date here. So first let's select all in the task list. And now instead of doing a field update to all of them, which I don't want to do, I'll go to the three dots here and click execute macro rule. And I'll assign overdue tasks to me and execute and I'll click execute. So now you see now you see with the click of a button, we've only assigned the overdue tasks to me and not these ones that were not overdue. So the macro rule just gives you that level of conditional application of a mass field update. It definitely saves you time if you have, like I said, many, many tasks in a task list and you need to quickly make a change and reassign them or reprioritize them. Now, one other thing I want to show you is that if you are using the issues module in Zoho Projects, we do also have something called business rules. Now we are not using this in our organization, but business rules operate in a very similar way as workflow rules do at the task level. And you can see here, I have a workflow rule to automate video production tasks and I've associated custom functions. That's one of the other actions that we can add here in this action menu. So I have two associated custom functions. Uh, I'm creating some video subtasks and I'm also creating a work drive folder and a Zoho writer document. And I will have a future video walking through how we did this work drive folder custom function. So that's how you set up automation rules in Zoho projects. And there's definitely potential here to minimize uh, tedious tasks in your project management and focus on the things that really matter in your projects. And as always, you can contact Beckman Collaborative for support with these automation rules. 
Thank you for watching this video. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and we'll see you on the next one.